All right, we're back with Gil because we're tasting another wine from the Acosta family. But this time, it's not just Hugo, right? No, this is the uh, Aborigen, Acrata Tinta del Valle. This is the, uh, the next generation. So Hugo da Costa started Casa de Piedra. He's got uh, uh, two daughters and a son. As they grew up, they, they started uh, getting into the wine business. And uh, what, what better place to learn but from dad, Casa de Piedra. <clears throat> this guy. So, Bill, um, Hugo, uh, you know, he started his own brand, but after he worked for some pretty large, important producers down there. Who, who was his uh, employer before? <clears throat> you know, he worked for uh, Santo Tomas for 13 years. He was their, their winemaker. Right. That, that's a, that was a big producer. I don't know if it's still owned by Pernod Ricard, but I, I think it was back then. And uh, that's, that's like international and big and uh, volume oriented. And then he left there to start these these smaller, more more isolated, focused wines and kind of became like the, you know, Michelle Roland or Philippe Melka of, of Baja. And now this is his the next generation. And Gil, when you tasted me on this wine, I dug it so much. I just thought that this was so cool. And you could totally tell that this is uh got the Hugo da Costa gene at least. You, you know, it, it, it's one of those uh, those wines that uh, it's just it, it's it's easy to drink. It has a lot of expression on the label. Acrata Acrata means uh, no rules. So th this was born as a Monday through Thursday wine after Vino Vino de Piedra was established. Uh, Gloria da Costa, Hugo's wife said, why don't we make something for every day? Let's make something for Monday through Thursday that's uh, easy and that's drinkable. And if we don't finish the bottle, we could put it in the fridge and drink it tomorrow. So the uh, the name Tinta del Valle is uh, Red of the Valley. So they said, what should we use? Well, we have a lot of Grenache. So let's just pick some Grenache and then a little bit of pizza, Petite Syrah and, and Acrata Tinta del Valle was born. So 92% uh, Grenache, 8% Petit Syrah. It's a young wine as far as reference. The time that it spends it in the uh, oak aging is only six months, but the uh, current fruit that they're using is fruit that's 50-year-old uh, vines. So that the old vines give it a lot of character, a lot of depth. You know, it's something that happens along the way is that some grapes get pretty famous, Cabernet, uh, for a while, Merlot, sure, certainly Syrah, uh, uh, Grenache. But there are some grapes that maybe cost a little bit less because the demand is maybe not quite as hefty as, say, Cabernet or Pinot Noir. And so Grenache and Petit Syrah, you kind of get a lot of wine for the, for the price. Uh, even as a grower producer, you can buy these grape varieties for a little bit of a discount to the, you know, the king of grapes, King uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. So you blend these together and you do have the, you know, it's notice the spelling Petite Syrah. It is not, it, I, it's neither Petite nor is it Syrah. It's a grape variety called Petite Syrah or Derif. And it was uh, created to uh, be a very thick skin grape variety with incredible uh, pigment and um, it's it's a it's a grape variety that will you know change the color of a wine because it's so intense and uh, stains the glass. It's kind of that way. So when you, I'm sure they're not using that much of it here to really take over the wine. You want to accent the wine, not take over the wine. And I think they did a great job here of balancing those pillars and some more great photographs. setting the mood putting us in the baja state of mind really cool and rustic and farmy and not that luxurious spa type of environment that you're going to hit in napa valley but a little bit more of a working farm feel yeah, that's one of the things about ugo he's really focused on just producing grapes i, I remember having a conversation with him about casa de piedra that maybe he needs to like sprucing that up a little bit. And he gave me this look and he says, I'm a winemaker. I focus on making wine. 
But because of all his relationships, because he's been there for such a long time, he has a lot of access to a lot of, uh, you know, good, good fruits. And this, this Grenache is, is like uh, known as the Grenache of the Valley. Well, I don't think these wines get rated by the Wine Spectator, by Jeb Dunnick, by Robert Parker. So uh, I, you know, as a person who worked for some of those people, I took it upon myself and gave it a, a very nice score. Um, wonderful color, balanced in texture, lots of spice, fruits, coffee, and leafy tomato plant. This wine is fresh, fun, affordable, pleasurable. And then the way I, I score wine, it's colors, 15 points possible. I gave it 13.5. Aroma, 23.5 out of 25. The body's 23.5 out of 25. And overall, 33.5 out of 35. So 94 points. That's how we get there. And it's a it's a beautiful little fun wine. And I think um, I, I, I just adore it. And I've done very well with it. And I thank you for bringing it to us. We're going to break from the video now, Gil, and taste it with the team. We appreciate your uh, your insight and knowledge and, and support. Thanks so much. Thank you. Cheers. Take care, Gail. Thanks, buddy. Have a good day. You as well.